Good evening and welcome to another episode of the Hempy Hour. I am one of your hosts, Gina Mama Epps. I am Lolo Carter. And together we are your favorite Hemp Sisters over at the Hemp Sisters Nation, where we pride ourselves on unconditional love, support, education. I'm going to give it to you today. <laughs> and just the love for humanity. You know, mm. we, we really want to bring people together and teach about this plant. And uh, with that being said, today's episode is a few different questions that we got from our LinkedIn family. I had done a video and asked for questions that Lo and I are going to answer one by one. So we're going to take the next few weeks and do this. We're going to answer all your fantastic questions. And today we will start with Doreen. Yeah, you do have quite the inquisitive audience. I do, and I love yeah. that. All of the right questions are being asked. Yes. Really cool. Um, Doreen would like to know, does hemp or cannabis help to reduce migraines? Yeah, so it's probably best to start at, like, what a migraine actually is. Yeah, right? yeah, I agree. So, if you're a sufferer, you need no introduction. Um, <laughs> like us, periodically. Right. Um, but a migraine is a recurrent throbbing headache and it typically affects one side of the head or the other. Um, it's often accompanied by nausea and disturbed vision. You can have symptoms that would include you know, sensitivity to light, uh, sound, smell, touch, you know, again, nausea and vomiting, uh, lightheadedness, you know, pass out. It's torture. <laughs> it's torture. It's torture. Depending, yeah. Um, blurred vision is also accompanied with uh, migraines. And it actually affects about 12% of people. Uh, it's very common, including children. And women, you know, have higher occurrences of migraines than men. Now, do you so. think that's because women have so much more in our plates? <laughs> Yes, happens. we do. And our hormones are constantly serving us a delicious recipe. Welcome to your 40s. <laughs> You've never been ready for this. In 10 years, mom. <laughs> um, one of the things about, that's unique about migraine sufferers, like I'm like getting a headache, you know, um, you actually get, most people get like sensory warning symptoms. Right. And these are called auras. So when you're constantly having migraines, you start to have these clues um, prior to the onset of the headache. And then um, that's actually something that's also uh, runs in families as well. So um, uh, genetics. Yeah, we're constantly at a fight, <laughs> you know, like know it. <laughs> um, most treatments uh, for migraines include a drug family of, uh, they're called triptans. Um, secondary to that would be alkaloids. Trippins are more expensive um, in treatment, and you have your, you know, your insurance company is going to cut that off. Hmm. Um, alkaloids are the less expensive version, but they, uh, you know, um, don't work as well. Um, they both primarily work primarily work by blocking the release of pro-inflammatory compounds in the brain. Um, so this is what, what causes the pain of your migraine. It's the inflammation. Unfortunately, uh, the side effects that come with these top two drug choices include rebound headaches, um, tightness, uh, pain in the chest, um, dizziness, nausea, <laughs> vomiting, uh, overall body warmth, like a reaction to your body, um, redness, and then tingling under the skin. Nothing like a headache to help your headache. <laughs> Thanks, right. Big Pharma. Right, just bring it down with it right and the tingling under the skin is really something that can be very annoying yeah again we look at risk reward right so this is where kind of cannabis comes into play right, right. so when you're looking at where you get pain from migraine is inflammation um so while there's limited research uh about the mechanisms mechanisms behind why cannabinoids alleviate migraines um anecdotal reports you know, show that it does. Right. So this kind of took researchers down a path um, when they were looking at diseases uh, like migraines um, that don't really have a etiology, like they don't know where they are stem from. They, right. they know what the extent is, um, but the precursor events, is, it's hard to track. So this developed the endocannabinoid deficiency theory. So migraines um, are shown in recent studies uh, that abnormal inflammatory responses are the cause of this. 
Um, now, our endocannabinoid system exists uh, within your body to uh, maintain homeostasis, which is our balance. Um, so it exists mm -hmm. in all of their bodies? All of you. Now, oh. even the pets that might be laying around you are um, privileged to this master regulatory system. Right? Oh, yeah. <laughs> the more you know. <laughs> Where's my little <laughs> rainbow? <laughs> um, so, uh, you know, so when you're tracking a migraine, you know, it starts with a trigger of that drug. Which is a bright light. Hormones, we discussed that. Even some people, certain smells of foods can actually trigger an event. Um, so what happens though? Like you relate to that being pregnant. No, oh, right. Very, right. very yeah, similar. 100%. Very, very similar. 100%. Like your hormones will potentially destroy you. <laughs> anyway, carry on. I know. Go there. I know. Don't go. Uh, so what happens is that this particular trigger event in somebody that's prone to migraines, uh, it causes an imbalance in the brain, right? Um, which, when that happens, a normal functioning body should trigger the production of endocannabinoids that which our, our bodies naturally produce. Which our bodies naturally produce, okay. correct. So we have, um, so that's supposed to happen. This actually will then create balance in the situation. Whatever uh, the trigger event is causing, the negative reaction is now to bring balance uh, through these this particular mm -hmm. system. Um, now. When your body is deficient in the, the production of endocannabinoids, because endocannabinoids are made on demand, right? Um, for these types of reasons, you know, we need it now, we need it now. Right. Um, so when, when your body is deficient of the quality and the production of endocannabinoids, this imbalance that's happening continues. So this is where the, the migraine develops, right? If it goes into a migraine headache. So the trigger now it's gone into a migraine headache because it's not getting the endocannabinoids to hit the receptors to stop this process. Um, pain. And pain is the result of that because inflammation, as we know, equals pain. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, so that, that's in our entire body. No, that's everywhere. that's everywhere. Right. That is the natural response to inflammation for any threat we have, whether it be immune or, uh, or whatnot. It's sure. our body's process. Um, so that basically what happens in a migraine, it becomes out of control, right? And this is the resulting pain. So now studies uh, that show that endocannabinoids, which are cannabinoids that we make ourselves, um, and then cannabinoids, which um, the term is kind of loosely, it should be phytocannabinoids if we're talking yeah. at, yeah, when we're talking about cannabinoid therapies, therapy, right, phytocannabinoid. Um, what those studies showed is that the receptors, um, the cannabinoids inhibited receptors that control these symptoms, the vomiting, the pain, and they actually work to block the symptoms from occurring. Um, THC, which it's my favorite, it's the favorite, but it's also the most misunderstood yes. cannabinoid because yeah. of it's the know. root of all the propaganda on this plant. Right. This one cannabinoid right. is literally the root of the last eighty years of hell for us. Right to this plant and we are uh, divided over one or two, you know, right? right. <laughs> of components, um, which, you know, we'll kind of discuss. I mean, it's you know, this, the level of THC really controls that type of experience. Right. So, um, but THC actually reduces uh, serotonin release. So this is blocking um, pain, vomiting, mm. nausea. Um, and cannabinoids are found to bind to the area of the brain that modulates this pain transmission. That's so cool. No, it really is. Science. Right, right. Like the, right, the plant replacing the plant that the body makes to help the Beautiful. Um, beautiful. Harmonic. Really <laughs> um, so the, it, basically the brain, okay, so the cannabinoids bind um, uh, to the area of the brain that is modulating the, the pain transmission. Um, and this is kind of where we, we find where migraines are generated. Uh, following another study, they had three cases um, that reported of heavy, you know, like you, like a chronic like yeah. heavy, uh, user of cannabis, um, and them developing migraine attacks after they developed cannabis. Right. So, Which people like to turn into an addiction. <laughs> right. Thank you. Yeah, good point. But that's what's going to happen because in the study, they were basically medications that I mentioned the tryptans and alkaloid medications when they also developed these migraine attacks you know continued this right, this suggests that these new 
contacts after stopping a therapy that is helping you with your, you know, cease or lessen migraines, um, that they're they're working on the same uh, mechanism of action, right? Um, one has side effects, though, uh, while taking, and one does not, um, you know. Um, they also look at genetic factors within these case studies that allow for increased inflammation. So some people are genetically prone to have increased inflammation, um, and that particular, um, those genes were present in migraine patients over the control subjects in the group as well. Um, Super interesting. Right. No, so continue your point. The root of all evil. Honestly. No, I presence. Um, all of, in the study, they were decreased in patients that were Well, um, in the medication that, like, over the counter medications um, that people were using uh, for headaches, basically suggesting that endocannabinoid consumption um, was actually involved with, uh, with the migraine condition. That's really interesting. Very, you know, very. Um, we can talk about that briefly, but that this actually like migraines, fibromyalgia, IBS, these are all inflammatory response, right. right? You know, conditions and diseases, and a part of it that is endocannabinoid. You know, um, so it's really, it's really interesting. Mm -hmm. um, cannabis has been for thousands of years to treat headaches. Thousands of years. Thousands you guys hear that? Yeah, like, not last week. I swear. Not, <laughs> not once the world started to catch on. And they have better sleep. Uh, they also report less frequency and less severity of the migraine headaches with their cannabis. Um, and knowing the triggers of migraine deprivation, anxiety, and stress. Mm. Cannabis works to relieve those events, right? So when you oh, have. Oh, that's, that, that's a trifecta of why <laughs> I use this plant. <laughs> so if you can read the causes, the triggers of your migraine, environment where migraine. Actually form. Right. Um, and that's where cannabis is super unique because we're kind of be proactive. Stop it before it starts. Yeah, exactly. Um, and then you know, and then you see the fact that with all the medications that we have, you know, they're being treated in different ways, right. which is not the root cause. Right. Um, you know, we can learn about the conditions and diseases and where cannabis can actually get to the root portion of that where where your disease starts and why your disease starts. Right. I mean, it's it's a no-brainer. <laughs> um, so there's no question uh, you know, during the, the, um, the cannabis helps uh, cease and even lessen severity of migraines, especially if you take it when you have on, on the onset of the pain. Um, regular use of low-dose products that have THC um, significantly reduce severity of headaches. Um, we talk about that because, you know, in legal hemp products, a full spectrum product will have a, a legal amount of THC. Right. Um, that number and that amount is decided based on, it's not going to get you high in the no. traditional sense, right? Um, but it's going to get you, what is it, healthy? It's going to get you healthy. Get you healthy. Healthy, not high. <laughs> healthy, not high. There it is. Um, and, you know, you can use either THC or even just regular um, CBD products that have a full spectrum of cannabinoids and right. they have not been depleted of the natural constituents of the plant. Um, and you would do that if you have a headache that comes, you would want a rapid onset of delivery. And the best way to do that would be like through inhalation. Um, second to that would be sublingual. I'm really glad you brought that up because I'm, I'm someone that suffers from chronic pain. And like Lo just said, when you are in intense pain, you don't necessarily want to wait an hour plus for a sublingual tincture to kick in. So you're going to use a quick little, um, a couple hits, a couple, you know, a smoke a little bit. You might dab once or twice. You might use a vape pen because then you're getting the immediate effects. But then once, you know, you get a little bit of that relief, then your tincture kicks in and now, now you're where you're supposed to be. And that, that pain is gone. The inflammation is gone and you've stopped what could have ruined your entire day, if not two.
we're in a cr- acute pain and chronic pain are two very right. different things. Right. You know, we have some really magical things to help us with acute pain. Mm-hmm. Right? Like I'm, I'm a journey and I need to get it's it's a very it's a very stressful event, right? Right. Um, and for example, we can get a chair to do that. When you are talking to people about chronic pain, uh, you know opiates and things are not the mm-hmm. answer mm-hmm. they they can't be because the long-term effect uh, of these things is is detrimental right that's right right so uh in uh sufferers in in getting them into other methods yes. because it's about cannabis is about helping the body help itself um well said and you know, other things are just really just trying to get you through, you know, these events and things, but they, they come with their own risks and rewards. So, absolutely. So, Doreen, I hope we answered your question about cannabis and migraines. They absolutely 100% cannabis will help you mig- your migraine. And we hope you will reach out to us. We can recommend a starting point for you. Let's, let's have a conversation and let's see if we can get this plant into your life and help you get a little relief naturally. Yeah, that's just really, it's number. Side effects, really, for things you didn't even know you had wrong with you. Right, right. 